And in, in the past, they have beaten Missouri and Oklahoma State at home. They do not mind taking on Ohio State, and their offense is a fast-paced, hurry-up, tempo offense. NASCAR style, they call it. If they run 75 to 80 plays, that means the Ohio State defense will have to make a lot of adjustments today. Well, we are set to go. We hope you are as well. We're in Columbus for the Trojans of Troy against the Ohio State Buckeyes. Kickoff next. Well, they had terrible weather here on Sunday. The aftermath of Hurricane Ike knocking the power out for millions all over the Buckeye State, including here in Columbus. But most of the folks have had their energy back on at least over the last 24 hours. And it is a beautiful Saturday afternoon here in Columbus, Ohio. Pleasure as always to be joined on our broadcast team. Along the sidelines, she'll be working Carissa Thompson. Yeah, Tom, it's absolutely beautiful out here. A great day for football. Now, you guys mentioned before the break all the changes to the offensive line, one of those being Mike Brewster, the true freshman who will start at center. Now, if and in moments, we will find out. I've been down here, and I've seen no indication of who will get that start. But if the guy wearing the number two jersey, Terrell Pryor, is in fact the number one guy, it'll be the first time ever in Ohio State football history that a true freshman has started at center and quarterback. Well, we are all anxiously awaiting, as are so many here in Columbus, to find out whether or not Pryor will be the guy. Ohio State, by the way, has won the toss, selected to receive, so we'll find out quickly. Jim Trussell, 55 native of Mentor, Ohio, in his eighth year, 75 and 17, his record at Ohio State. Larry Blakeney, what a job he has done, the 60-year-old native of Gordo, Alabama, in his 18th year at Troy. He's won 138 games and has won back-to-back Sunbelt Conference titles. They're 2-0 to start this year. All right, Charles, let's take a look at today's Suzuki ATV's keys to the game. For Troy on offense, no speed limit. They ran 107 plays last week against Alcorn, 97 against Oklahoma State last week. They need to up, keep the tempo up. Tri Trojan Triangle on defense, Sherrod Martin, the safety, and Bear Woods and Boris Lee, the linebackers, they're their top players. For Ohio State, red alert. They need better production inside the red zone. They've, got, they've kicked five field goals and only three touchdowns out of eight times scoring and play inside out. Doug Worthington will start a defensive tackle with Cameron Hayward. They're essentially defensive ends, and they're putting them in there to combat the speed of the spread offense. Well, the Buckeyes will get the football. A very short kick, and it bounces out of bounds. That'll be a penalty flag. So very good field position for Ohio State. And He'll let's see. out of bounds. Ball be placed at the 40-yard line. First and 10, Ohio State. Let's see who comes out at quarterback. Todd Beckman is in the huddle along the sideline. So is Terrell Pryor, and it will be the true freshman from Jeanette, Pennsylvania. You hear the crowd reacting. Terrell Pryor will start for the first time at quarterback. It really doesn't surprise me, Tom, because I really think Jim Trestle is starting Terrell Pryor for two reasons. One, he's a super player, but two, to protect Todd Beckman. You're not really sure what kind of reaction Beckman would have gotten if he'd come out here first. Pryor, you knew it'd be an ovation. Daniel Boom Heron, a redshirt freshman, carries for eight yards, tripped up by Tavares Williams, a strong safety of Troy. Take a look at the Rotel starting lineup. We begin in the backfield where, again, no Beanie Wells. It'll be Daniel Heron, the redshirt freshman, receiving core led by Brian Robiski and Brian Hartline. Up front, the change Charles alluded to, the true freshman out of Orlando, Mike Brewster, the started center. Jim Porter, their regular center, moves over to guard after last week's injury to senior starter Steve Raring. And we will see numerous offensive line combinations today for Ohio State. Heron very close to a first down, needed to get right at the 50, and he's wrapped up and tackled by Bear Woods. Tom Carissa Thompson told us it's the first time in Ohio State history a true freshman snaps the ball to another true freshman to start a ball game in Terrell Pryor and Michael Brewster getting off to a nice start getting an initial block in and then trying to get to the second level and help out. Well, I hate to say on the first series it's an important third down. This is an important third down. And they need to just move people and get it. And they, and did. they did it right behind a true freshman center Mike Brewster first down for Terrell Pryor and Ohio State. Rotel lineup for 
Troy on defense. Cameron Sheffield broke his wrist playing basketball during the summertime. Already two sacks on the year. Linebacking core led by number two. He'll be all over the field today. Boris Lee. And in the secondary, three senior starters, the lone underclassman is Chris Bowens at right cornerback. And Pryor to throw for the first time. Instead, he'll run it and picks up three. Coming up to make the tackle is Terrence Moore, who really is a fifth defensive back, but they call him a linebacker. You're exactly right, Tom. Really, they're playing a 4-2-5 alignment because Moore is listed as a linebacker, but he warms up and works out with the defensive backs, his natural position. A nice job by Moore, maintaining good leverage and a nice form tackle on the freshman Terrell Pryor. Due to the injury to Chris Wells, who has not played since the season opener, believe it or not, Terrell Pryor is Ohio State's leading rusher on the year. The work out of the shotgun. And runs it off to the right side, breaks it to the outside, and still on his feet, tip goes out of bounds for a first down at the 33-yard line. A gain of 12. Take a look at the blocking coming up front. See, there's Rory Nickel, number 88, looking for someone. That's how good the blocking in. Number nine was Brian Hartline, the wide receiver, did a nice job holding position and then not clipping or grabbing someone. Total quarterback run game, direct snap, quarterback sweep like an old single wing and Todd Beckman now goes into the lineup for the first time. See the numbers rushing for prior last week against SC passing he hit on seven of nine. So Beckman into the game coming off a rough one against the Trojans. He was intercepted twice once for a touchdown. He'll hand it off to Daniel Heron who's inside the 30 again a four. Do you get a sense early that Jim Tressel the head coach Jim Bowman the offensive coordinator had a little meeting that said one way to right the ship is let these kids fire out, just hit someone. Let's run the football. You know, let's get back to Ohio State football, get physical. The offensive line is catching a lot, has caught a lot of flack in the last week. How do you turn them loose? Fire out and hit someone. And so far, Ohio State is establishing their run game. Flyer right back in there out of the shotgun and a keeper, he's still on his feet. And he's very close to first down yardage. Needed to get to the 23. They'll spot it at the 22 and move the chains again. Ran right by Kenny Maynard. What a great fake. The fake froze people, and then Maynard, number 51, had a shot at him, but he was caught betwixt and between. Didn't know whether to go for the quarterback or the pitch guy. That allowed the tackle to be broken easily by Terrell Pryor cutting back against the grain. Well, there is very little doubt this Ohio State team is still looking its wounds from last Saturday, a much ballyhooed matchup against USC. And the Buckeyes were throttled. After a very impressive opening drive, they got to first and goal at the five-yard line. That's Daniel Heron. He's close to another first down inside the 15. They came away with three points on that opening drive, moving Pryor and Beckman in. They had to settle for three. Watch these guys in here. Watch the big fellas handle the guys up front, Tom. Look at that. Just moved the space, occupied Boris Lee, who you talked about at the top of the show, as their best player, and he ended up making the tackle, but way downfield. And you're right, Tom, getting only three against USC in that big drive early really hurt Ohio State in that game. This has to be a touchdown drive. Fire up under center this time. He's going to throw it to the end zone. Touchdown into the corner to Roy Nickel. And that is the first touchdown pass in the young career of Terrell Pryor. Couldn't ask for any better, could you, Tom? A perfect drive to start off for Ohio State. Establish the run, easy throw for Pryor on the touchdown pass, and Ohio State's on the board, and everyone feels better than supports the Scarlet and Gray right now. Pryor gets the start, caps it off with his first touchdown pass. 7-0 Ohio State. Rory Nickel did not 
score a touchdown last season for Ohio State. This is his first since 2006. Big look, Tom. Here he is at the tight end. He's just going to slip off and go kind of a flag route. But what set this up was the run game for Ohio State. They ran it so successfully they could go to play action here. Nickel wide open and a nice throw by Pryor to the back of the end zone for the first score of the game. Pryor's first collegiate touchdown pass goes to Rory Nickel. And Ohio State fans are saying, I told you to throw it more to the tight end. <laughs> Petrie to kick it away. Maurice Greer 27. Jora Calvin is back there and it will be Greer. He's out across the 25 to the 27 yard line. Big Ten Network football is brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. Keep the wheels turning. By Hampton Hotels at Hampton. We love having you here. By Cargill. Collaborate, create, succeed. And by Nissan, proud sponsor of the 2008 Heisman Trophy, shift the way you move through the world. Troy gets a football for the first time, down 7 0. His first year as a starter is quarterback Jamie Hampton. And his first pass of the afternoon batted down at the line of scrimmage. It looked like Cameron Haywood got a paw on it. Well, Hampton won the job during the summertime, has gotten off to a good start. He's thrown five touchdowns against three interceptions. Lawrence Wilson actually batted that ball down. 87-97, one number off. Quick throw to Chip Reeves, and he's out across the 30 to the 32-yard line. So a gain of five, third and five of coming. Take a look at the Rotel lineups. Dewan Harris in the season opener rushed for 148 yards, and that trio of wide receivers, just three out of 12 that we might see catch a pass today. Outstanding tackles. Deion Small on the right side, Chris Jamison on the left. Bunch formation to the top of your screen. And now they already got a first jump. I know they like to play the big room, but this is still a big place. Start, number 65 on the offense. Five yard penalty. John O'Neill, our referee today, a Big Ten officiating crew. One of their experienced offensive linemen, Chris Jamison, the left tackle, jumped. So instead of third and about five, they're back to third and ten. Those are the types of mistakes that upset-minded teams going to play in places like Ohio State can't afford to make. Changes your play calling and your dynamics on offense. Hampton throws through the hands of Jarrell Jernigan. Well, after the penalty took him from third and five to third and ten, it's three and out. And it helped Jim Haycock, the defense coordinator, change what he wanted to do. Instead of worrying about having to rush the quarterback on third and five, he said, I'm going to turn three guys loose. Watch up front. Three-man rush. Number one in the middle. There he is, Freeman. He's just kind of spying any back that might slip out of the backfield. And then the rest of the coverage is able to play from back to front, keeping everything in front of them, then rushing up to make a tackle if necessary. The back waiting on the punt. Brian Hartline, number nine. Brian Robisky, number 80. No Ray Small. He's already returned a punt for a touchdown this season against Ohio University. Hartline from his own 21. Tries to turn the corner, and a late flag comes in. Hard line hit as he was going out of bounds. Well, they'll tack on yardage from the 30 yard line. We'll see where they spot it after the penalty. After the play was over, dead ball, personal foul, number 91 on the kicking team. 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Time out. Ohio State will get it from their own 45 after the penalty, already leading 7 0. Is the Big Ten Network. Now for Nissan's what it takes to get there. Certainly better numbers than this for Ohio State. Than against USC when they scored just three points. First time since 1996 against Michigan. They failed to score a touchdown. Penalized ten times. Had five sacks. Nissan shipped performance. Terrell Pryor still in the game at quarterback. And 
And Heron, a pickup of four, will bring up second down and six. Many different ways to conduct your run game, Tom. You can come in and load up with tight ends and have tight formations and try and pound away. On the last play, Jim Trestle elected to spread things out. Three wide receivers, one back, trying to create a little bit better running lane for Boom Heron. And a nice pickup, second and six, which means they're right on schedule for offensive play calling. Trying to stay ahead of the chains, as the play callers like to call it. Much has been made about Jim Trestle's decision this go around at the quarterback position. Many parallels drawn to that 2004 season here at Ohio State. Delay of game. The offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. Well, you may remember in 04, Trestle had a struggling quarterback in Justin Zwick, and who, like Todd Beckman, was not entirely to blame for the struggles on offense. Troy Smith set out for two straight losses in half of a third game before the change was made. Ohio State did not lose again and capped off the season by blitzing Notre Dame in the Fiesta Bowl and finishing in the top five in the country. And that was an offensive explosion in that Fiesta Bowl. I mean, it was unbelievable. After the penalty prior, great protection looking down the field towards the sideline. Jump ball for Brian Robisky and covered beautifully by Jorick Calvin. That was excellent coverage by number 14, Jorick Calvin. They tried to isolate Brian Robisky, their best receiver, one on one to the wide side of the field. Showed flow opposite and threw back against it to ensure that it was a one on one route. Jorick Calvin did not bite on the post route, stayed with him, and broke up the play. Terrific coverage by Jorick Calvin, who moved into the starting lineup in game two and shows no signs of wanting to go back to the bench. On the backfield, you have Brandon Sane, Daniel Heron, and out of the shotgun, the pistol formation, if you will, is Aaron Terrell Pryor. And he'll dump it off out of the backfield to Heron. Deny first down yardage. So Ohio State on this go round will have to punt it away. And we saw an early example of how well Troy can run on defense. Did you see how quickly they closed down on the, on the play? As soon as the ball was dumped off, even linemen running from inside out arrived to put the hit on the on the uh, receiver and force the punt. Jarrell Jernigan standing back at his own 15 yard line. That young man has eye popping skills, both as a return man and a receiver. A.J. Trapasso punts it into the end zone, so it'll be first and 10 for Troy at the 20. A penalty flag is on the field, by the way. It'll be against Ohio State. Later tonight in prime time, Kellen Lewis looks to shine for Indiana as the Hoosiers will take on Ball State. Our coverage starts with the football Saturday pregame show presented by Suzuki ATVs at 6.30 Eastern on the Big Ten Network. That's a big game, Tom. Yeah, that's a big ball game because Ball State comes in now with their own aspirations in the MAC. A big national TV win over Navy, an identifiable quarterback named Nate Davis who can play, and then he has the long and the short of it. Dante Love and Darius Hill. Dante Love's the little guy who can make plays. Darius Hill, 6'6", he makes plays. So Kellen Lewis, Greg Middleton will have to rush the passer for Indiana. It's a big game for the Hoosiers at home. And of course, for current coach Lynch, he's going up against a team where he was a head man. And, and won a couple of MAC championships as the head coach. First down and the throw to Dewan Harris out of the backfield. And he's run out of bounds at the 29-yard line. By the way, the penalty was an illegal shift by Ohio State, so they tacked on the five yards from the 20. Troy University located 40 minutes south of Montgomery, Alabama. Enrollment of a little better than 6,100. They play in the Sun Belt Conference. Harris getting the football and is run out of bounds by Chimde Chekla. Very close to first down yardage. He looks to be about a half a yard short. And now Troy is trying to move things along a little bit quicker. What they call NASCAR tempo. Hurry up to the line of scrimmage. Quicker calls coming in from the sidelines, hoping they can catch the defense before they can make adjustments. Perhaps a free play here, and Hampton lofting the ball. And a penalty flag comes in. Malcolm Jenkins got locked up with Kennard Burton right around midfield. 
I think they'll get a bigger penalty than the first one. The first one will be jumping on Ohio State. I think Jermail Hale. There are two fouls on the play. Hines, I mean. Offside, number seven on the defense. A penalty be declined. Pass interference, number two on the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. And what led to the pass interference, watch how Kennard Burton, number nine, comes back for the football and jumps in to Malcolm Jenkins, essentially initiating the contact and causing the penalty on Jenkins. A nice job by Burton trying to go back towards the football. And when he ran into Jenkins, who doesn't have his head turned, the flag goes against Ohio State. A savvy move by the receiver of Troy. Well, Burton had a monster game last year against Georgia. Dangerous throw to Jernigan, read beautifully that time by Jermail Haynes, a sophomore out of Cleveland's Glenville High School. And of course, that school is coached by Ted Ginn Sr., the father of former Ohio State great Ted Ginn Jr. How about the play? Great call here. I mean, excuse me, a nice play by Jermail Hines, who came here, as you mentioned, Tom, under the tutelage of Ted Ginn Sr., but he came to Ohio State as a linebacker. They've also now moved him to safety, so he's one of those hybrid type guys. Read the play, gets underneath the block. Troy's able to block two, but block two, but three three defenders on the play. They didn't get the third guy. They're gonna hand it to Jernigan, and flags come in as he crosses midfield and picks up a couple of yards. But we'll wait on the flag. Illegal formation. Less than seven men on the line of scrimmage on the offense. That penalty be declined. Third down. Well, while we have a moment, let's check in from Chicago with Dave Rudson. Thank you, Tom. Minnesota hosting Florida Atlantic. Gophers trying to remain perfect. Shady Solomon takes it into the end zone, puts him on top 7 0. They've added a field goal. It's 10 zip. Of course, Minnesota will open Big Ten play here in Columbus next Saturday, and we'll have that game for you right here on the Big Ten Network. Harris on third down is denied first down yardage, tackled at the 45-yard line. Again, Jermail Hines coming up to make the stop, had help from Kurt Coleman. He had kind of seen that play before to the other side. And again, Troy's able to block two, but not three. Watch to the right side of your screen as you're watching it. There, see, watch there. Watch the play now that Hines makes, playing off of the block and falling back inside to make the tackle. Nice job by Hines as he played off the block at number 86, Patrick Terry, and thwarted the bid for a first down. Will Goggins, a freshman punter, has a check up at the five yard line. Beautiful punt by the red shirt freshman Goggins of 40 yards. We'll see if Pryor's coming back out there at quarterback when we return. 7-0 Ohio State, 4.37 to play in the opening quarter from Ohio Stadium in Columbus. Alongside Charles Davis, Carissa Thompson, and our entire crew, I'm Tom Brenneman. It is Terrell Pryor back at quarterback. This Buckeye drive starts from their own five-yard line and out of the eye formation. Nowhere to run. As Brandon Lang came up to make the tackle, let's check in again with Carissa. Well, guys, after that last touchdown pass from Terrell Pryor to Rory Nickel, the first guy to congratulate Pryor, that would be Todd Beckman. Brian Robisky weaving in and out of his teammates to get over and congratulate him. And who did Pryor make an effort to acknowledge? His offensive line, specifically one of the leaders on that line, Alex Boone. And I'd say that's a smart move, you guys, to acknowledge the help of your line. Well, you're not kidding, Boone. The All-American candidate at left tackle. Out of Lakewood, Ohio, in his fourth year as a starter. And Pryor, cutting it back to the inside, gets out to the 11-yard line. So third down and four or five upcoming for Ohio State. And this is a drive, Tom, where everyone knows you're not likely to put the ball in the air, at least not in a big type of a throw. It'd be more of a safe throw because of field position with a young quarterback. For the offensive line who's trying to get it together and get people moving in the right direction with them, this would be a big time pickup running the ball out of this hit. 
uh, out of this situation if they can manage it. Well, we'll call it third down and four. And again, Pryor out of the shotgun, fakes one way, looking around the other way. Down the field, Aswell Bisky, and he just did overthrow him. That had a touchdown written all over it. And it really didn't look like all that bad of a throw. Can't wait to see it now because it looked. The question's going to be, why is Brian Robisky just have, have one arm? extended not both arms going for the football i think that's going to be the big question now remember brian robisky hurt a shoulder in preseason we were here for the youngstown state game heard it again does that have a bearing on it but it sure looked like why not a second arm out to try and make the catch well now adre trapasso punts out of his own end zone a line drive punt and it is out of bounds and boy will have terrific field position at the Ohio State 47 yard line so a missed chance for the Buckeyes on the long throw to Brian Robisky. Big Ten tonight is your ultimate source for all things Big Ten including highlights analysis of all today's football action interviews and so much more Big Ten tonight 11 o'clock Eastern only on the Big Ten Network. How about this field position for Troy Tom. It's a great starting point for the Trojan offense. Jamie Hampton rolling left and throws that way to an open receiver. And still on his feet and shoved out of bounds at the 37-yard line is Chip Reeves. Beg your pardon, that was number nine, Kennard Burton. Their numbers get kind of garbled in their pads, Tom, and Reeves is eight and Burton is nine. They're going to cause us a problem all day. You did mention they're going to run 12 receivers, so it's going to be tough. But look at the production on offense, 107 plays against Alcorn last week for Troy. And a throw to Jernigan across the middle to the 30-yard line, so third down and four it'll be for the Trojans after a six-yard pickup. This is the type of game that continue that leaves you running all day long if you're a defensive lineman for Ohio State. Rushing the passer, pursuing after the ball is thrown. They'll rotate guys in and out, and already the second unit's in. Harris on a second down, on a second down carry as first down yardage to the Ohio State 22. And again, let's check in with Dave Revson from Chicago. I want to update you guys on what's going on with Central Michigan and Purdue. Dan LeFever here to Ontario Sneed and the Chippewas who trailed early now lead the Boilermakers 7 to 3. Purdue had that devastating loss last week to Oregon, a game it looked like the Boilermakers had won. Yes, and they play Central Michigan a lot. Just met them in the bowl game this past year as well as the regular season. Collision out there. The catch was made. The Troy sideline looking for interference on Hines. Jernigan did make the catch, but Hines leveled it right as the ball arrived. Someone came to play for Ohio State today, and he's wearing number seven, Jermail Hines. I know Troy wants interference, but that looked to me like almost perfect timing on the coverage. And you see Troy now looking to the sideline to get either the check or run the play that was already called. Nine passes versus three runs thus far for the Troy Trojans. Harris in the backfield. He'll stay in the block. Beautiful throw. A wide open receiver across the middle. And inside the five yard line, it's Kennard Burton. We mentioned against Georgia last year when Troy went to Sanford Stadium and rolled up nearly 500 yards of offense. Burton had 11 catches and two touchdowns. Well done. They've got a 28 year old offensive coordinator named Neil Brown who's continuing what he learned from Tony Franklin. Now the offensive coordinator at Auburn. Lots of motion and flow one way but the receiver underneath wide open into the alley. Trip to the red zone brought to you by Hotels.com and sacked at the 15 yard line is Hampton by James Laurinaitis. What is that about big time players producing big time plays when their team needs it? 
And that's what you expect from the Butkus Award winner as he defeated the block by number 32, Dewan Harris. Watch him coming right up the middle. And he just goes right past the running back and gets the quarterback with some help from Thaddeus Gibson, number 90. That'll be the final play of the opening quarter. That's the end of the first quarter. Ohio State marched down the field on its first drive, a touchdown pass prior to Rory Nickel. But now Troy knocking on the door to try and tie it up. Set to begin the second quarter here in Columbus. Second down and goal for Troy at the 14 after the nine yard sack by Laurinaitis. Ohio State three of five in the red zone on defense thus far this year. All three have been touchdowns as we look at our hotels.com graphic. All three have been touchdowns, but for Ohio State, if they hold them to a field goal, it's great. Well, after you change ends of the field, it's a, and it's you a let the play out. clock expire. It's a timeout. I mean, that's what it is. You talk about it. They come up and go to the line of scrimmage. They're looking to the side to see if it's a check or run it, and there's still no play call. That doesn't make any sense to me. And I just don't understand that. And I'm sure the Troy coaches are saying, all right, we, we got to get that corrected. Because to me, that's from the sideline. That's not on the team. Take a look at some of the first half numbers. Ohio State has run the ball extremely well without Chris that's Wells. Good. Again, a reminder, but only 14 yards passing. But the good thing was they got into the red zone and they scored a touchdown this time. As opposed to coming into the game, they rate for 10 in the red zone, but kick five field goals versus only three touchdowns. Yeah, the two possessions last week when yes. they got inside the SC First 20, the goal the five. and they came away with three, and then the touchdown pass it was called oh, back due to penalty, and then they missed the field goal. Yep. Trips to the left. Four receivers set on second and goal from the 14. Hampton. Throws. Nice catch down at the nine yard line. Again, made by Kennard Burton. Third down and goal upcoming. Not only was that a nice catch, but if that turned into tip drill, that's probably a touchdown for Ohio State because they were converging on the receiver. And my first thought was, boy, that's high and wide. If that goes in the air, look out. Excellent catch by Burton. Larry Blakeney has to feel pretty good about things right now, trailing only 7 0. Third and goal. He also knows, though, that he got to match sevens for sevens. A field goal would feel like a disappointment here for Troy. Hampton, good protection. Now flushed out of the pocket, and down he goes at the five. And the field goal unit will be set out for the Trojans. So a stop, if you will, for Ohio State. A big sack when they had it first and goal at the five. Look at all look at all this right here with Ohio State. They are going to defend the goal line. You don't retreat too deep into the end zone because if a guy catches it in front of you. So what that means he's still in the end zone. So you defend the end zone line and then come up and make the tackle. And that's exactly what Ohio State did. 22 yard field goal try for San Glussman the junior out of Mobile Alabama and it is good. Well, he's been perfect on the year. Five for five on field goal attempts. That one from 22 yards out. And it's a 7-3 ball game. Are you looking to enhance your game day experience? You can do so. You can do so as we present the Rotel Ultimate Tailgate Package Sweepstakes. You could win an incredible grand prize featuring a grill, a barbecue set, delicious Rotel products, and everything else you'll need to get ready for other great weekly prizes. To enter, log on to Big10Network.com and fill out an entry form. Lots of tailgating going on outside Ohio Stadium today, although, Charles, you certainly sense a difference as far as the enthusiasm level is concerned from where we were here three weeks ago prior to the Youngstown State game. And, of course, I'm sure a lot of that has to do with what happened last week in L.A. It's almost, it's almost a difference of the first week is we're coming and knowing we're going to have a good time to we're coming and tell us how to have a good time. You know, Ohio State, show us that we should have a good time. You, you see, you hear oh, yeah. go that? They kind of sitting back and waiting to see if the team will respond to what happened last week. 
Rory Nickel handles the short kick. And good field position for Ohio State at the 38. And again, we check in from Chicago with Dave Revson. Okay, Tom, kind of a slow start for Penn State. Went to the second quarter, scoreless with Temple, but they score early in that quarter. Dale Clark to Brett Brackett, 20-yard touchdown. It's 7-0, Nittany Lions. Dave, thank you. Charles, how good is Penn State in your estimation? I know it's very early, maybe it's a little early. tough to tell how good. But I think Temple will tell us a lot. Temple's a much improved ball club. And Al Golden, their coach, is a Penn State guy. And he knows how to, how to, how to play. They've taken deep people deep into the game before losing already this year. I think Penn State's pretty darn good, battling for number two in the conference right now. Reverse to Brian Hardline as he takes a pitch. And that did not fool Troy at all. Number 90, Cameron Sheffield, who started 12 games as a sophomore last year. He broke his wrist, as we mentioned, playing basketball during the summer. And he stayed home right there for a loss of six. Look to the left side of your screen. Cameron Sheffield does a great job being a BCR player. Boot, cut back, reverse. Anytime flow goes away and you're a defensive end or outside linebacker, you're supposed to say boot, cut back, reverse to yourself before you pursue to make sure all those options are eliminated. Sheffield did exactly that and made a big play. Todd Beckman back in the game and throws under throws a wide open Brian Hardline and some of the Bluebirds are heard for the first time today here in Columbus. And this is part of the reason why I believe Jim Trestle started Terrell prior today. He wanted Todd Beckman to avoid this as much as possible. You can't protect him the whole way. But Jim Trestle was worried if he started today, he'd hear it initially. But you did notice there were a bunch of people came in and cheered afterwards. So it's going to be an interesting dynamic in the stadium, how they respond to Todd Beckman. Breyer right back in there. We'll call it third and 16. They need to get all the way to the 48-yard line. And here they come after Pryor. He spins away from Sheffield. Fakes a throw. Lofts it to Robisky. It is caught. A penalty flag comes in. All the way down to the 37-yard line. But let's wait on the flag. This one might be coming back. Well, the elusive Terrell Pryor. Illegal touching on the offense, number eight. Stepped out of bounds on his own and was the first to touch the ball. So lost it down at the previous spot. Fourth down. But what they mean is that what they mean is that the receiver. Okay, look here, right in this area. Okay, take a look. That's what we're gonna talk about. See, right there, stepping on the sideline. And once he stepped on the sideline he's now an illegal participant if he comes back in as the first one to touch the ball once in play but the moves by Terrell Pryor first the spin then the fake those can't be taught that's just great athletic ability and the official said number eight it was number 80 Brian Robisky who wound up making the catch but he was the first man to touch it after going out of bounds coming back in 7-3 Ohio State 12-26 Take a look at the advanced auto parts road to the championship standings. Of course, conference play will kick off in the Big Ten starting next week. We'll be here in Columbus for Minnesota against Ohio State. Minnesota in a nice little battle today with Florida Atlantic, another Sun Belt Conference team. Gonna be fun watching how the standings play out. And next Saturday, we mentioned at noon Eastern, 11 Central, we'll have Minnesota against Ohio State. First down throw. What a nice catch made on the far side by number 81 the senior out of Fullerton California Michael Terry now you talked about patience as far as Ohio State is concerned on defense against this Troy offense this team will move the ball it's that type of an offense and they have skill position guys who can make plays the key is not giving up big plays that will hurt them early in the ball game. Hampton on the quarterback keeper is tripped up by James Laurinaitis. And, and that patience, Tom, it's a two yard gain there for Troy, has to extend to the crowd. When they see the ball being moved by Troy, and we see the first three possessions of Troy, two punts, and end up with a field goal on the last drive, the crowd can't get impatient and get upset with the defense. The key is going to be the number on the scoreboard in the scoring column, not the number of yards gained by Troy. Third down and three. 
And they're blitzing. They're able to get it off. But it's broken up. Was it intercepted by Kurt Coleman? It was. They got tangled up. With Gerald Tate. And it looked like Coleman just beat him to the football. And is that Kurt Coleman's first career interception? I believe it is. Look at what the catch really should have been made. And Coleman came in and took it right from Gerald Tate. Watch him come to the inside. The ball's juggled. Coleman grabs it, secures it, and goes to the ground. A huge play. And one thing that Coleman worked out all offseason was trying to add big plays to his game. Working with Michael Doss, the former safety here at Ohio State. Brandon Sane has checked into the game and he has met right at the line of scrimmage and all day long we're going to be calling the number two on defense for Troy that's Boris Lee only a junior out of Fargo Georgia and over the last two years he's forced a couple of fumbles he's intercepted five passes he's on every award watch list the Lombardi the Nagurski he's a football player how did he play last year at middle linebacker Tom at around 200 pounds he had inflamed tonsils, couldn't eat all year long. This year he finally had the surgery. Now he's up to about 230 and is a true wrecking ball. Breyer pitches it to Brandon Sane and just nowhere to go. Terrence Moore coming up to make the stop. The penalty flag is down on the field. Came in from deep, came from the back judge. Looks like an illegal block, illegal chop against Ohio State. Well, Jim Trussell has to be very concerned about the way things are going from an offensive standpoint. They had the opening drive where they went right down the field, primarily on the ground. During the play, there's a legal block on the waist, number nine on the offense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Repeat second down. That's a wide receiver, Brian Hartline. And normally you can chop if you're downfield. He might have come inside trying to help out on the play and maybe got a guy who was engaged already. Look at the penalty situation now. You just mentioned it. Five penalties, 41 yards against Ohio State already. They had 10 penalties last week against USC. There, right here, Hartline. Catching him downfield. A third down. Second down and 24. They set up the screen to Brandon Sane. They'll get a large chunk of it back. He's to the 39 yard line. So third down and 11 upcoming for Ohio State. Let's check in with Carissa Thompson. Well, guys, you were just talking about Boris Lee, and he's on the cover of the Troy program. And if you can get a tight shot here, Tony, for me, there's something right here on his left wrist. It's tape. And on every game day, he writes on that tape, living legend. He said it started when he was little. Him and kids would play in the neighborhood and say that they wanted to be living legends when they got older. So he has lofty goals, and he's living up to that on the football field. Well, you're not lying. Already an interception for him this season. Yeah, I would say the Troy fans would say that moniker is apt, Carissa. Aaron and Sane in the backfield, and Pryor steps up, looking around, throws down the middle, and it is caught in a touchdown by Hartline. Well, you just cannot put a premium on the ability to move around the Terrell Pryor gives this Ohio State offense at the quarterback position. Can't agree with you more because the ability to move around isn't just the ability to move and leave the pocket and run. It's the ability to move around and buy time. And that's exactly what Terrell Pryor did. Just a few steps sliding which bought time and allowed Hartline to come open and then an excellent delivery for the touchdown. 39 yard scoring strike from prior to Hartline for the junior out of North Kent. His first touchdown reception of the year for Pryor, his second touchdown throw today. <laughs> 39 yard touchdown throw. Terrell Pryor to Brian Hartline, giving Ohio State a 14 3 lead. You know, Troy always talks about how they do things, but watch Terrell Pryor's pocket presence. Young quarterback, see right here, stop. Right now, look at the lane he has where he could actually run the ball. He decides not to. Instead of being a guy who just flushes and takes off, 
he keeps his attention downfield, and because there was a running lane, the defensive backs jumped up. And once they did, Brian Hartline was open deep. Pryor hits him. Hartline's the ninth Ohio State player to score a touchdown. This, uh, we just scored this year for Ohio State, wearing number nine. Maurice Greer from the 10 yard line, and he is leveled at the 22 by Jake Stoneburner. We'll get jacked up with Big Ten fans in our Big Ten live cast featuring live interactive sports cast for all Big Ten games. Get real time stats photos chat and more for all of today's action. There's no other real time sports experience like it on the web today. The Big Ten live cast is everything a fan could want. Go to Big Ten Network.com slash live cast now. I think that was James Scott. We've got duplicate numbers all over the place Tom on the tackle. Well, we know the number 33 is. That's yeah. James Laurinaitis. Don't even bother giving out a second number if he's wearing it. But a lot of these guys, a lot of these teams give out duplicate numbers, offense and defense, for recruiting purposes. They make no bones about it anymore. Kids want to wear a certain number. Sure, we'll give it to you. And there's two of them. And that doesn't do us a lot of good up here. One of the big rule changes I pushed for for years, obviously falling on deaf ears. No one cares. Gain of nine on the run by Hampton. He's flushed out of the pocket and throws it away. Wisely throws it away. But finally, and when I say finally, this is something Ohio State has wanted since last year. Great interior pressure from a defensive tackle. Cameron Hayward, number 97, is the guy who brings the pressure inside. He's the first one to flush Jamie Hampton, the quarterback, and then Lawrence Wilson, number 87, is in his face, forcing the ball to be thrown away. Third down and a yard, and they're going to convert. And up to the 35-yard line, and again, it's Kennard Burton. We heard so much about the trio of Jernigan, number three, Burton, number nine, Michael Terry, number 81, as far as their receiving core was concerned. That's not good as Burton limps off the sideline on the first down conversion. He's playing too well for them to have him go to the sideline. They're hoping they can tape him up and get him right back out there. But on third and one, Troy stayed with their personality and threw the ball. DeJuan Harris met at the line of scrimmage by Doug Worthington. A loss of a yard. See, and that's why, Tom, not just because the play failed there, but the personality of a team has to go into a play caller's mind. Neil Brown, he knows they're not a big move them, up, move them aside, create a crease, run the ball inside type of team. So third and one for them is more likely a pass down than a run down versus a bigger, stronger defensive front, such as Ohio State's. Warren Ida's trying to get this crowd fired up. They've been very quiet on this Saturday afternoon. Hampton throws, catches made, and spinning out of one tackle after making the reception is Zach Markham, and he'll be a yard short of the first down. And after soon after Ohio State got pressure on Jamie Hampton, the offensive line did a nice job in pass protection. That is Gibson number 90 underneath on the coverage, but the ball was well thrown. Bring up again, third and short. And again, I see Troy running, Troy throwing the ball on this down to try and pick up the first down with five receivers in the pattern. Third down in a yard. And the catch to Jernigan, but what a play by Coleman. And depending on the spot here, well, it looked like a favorable spot was given to the Troy Trojans right there on that catch. I still think it's going to be fourth down, though. I still think he's a little bit short, but I think he had a first down on the catch. Watch. He catches it, but see how he goes back? If he had just kept running parallel to the sideline, it was close to first down, but watch. Right there, and then look what. He ends up losing almost two yards yep. before he's tackled. That's why it's not a first down, and you don't get initial yardage on the catch if you run after the catch. That's why the ball spotted where it is. Will Goggins on to punt it away. A little bit of a surprise, uh, Charles. Troy. Troy. Troy will spend a timeout. A 30-second timeout. We have not seen Ray Small dropping back 
Yes, very much of a surprise. To receive punts today for Ohio State. We mentioned he had the 69 yard punt return for a touchdown that proved to be the biggest play of the game in the sluggish win against Ohio University. And Tom, I can't think that I've seen him on offense thus far today either. Well, coming up next, a Buffalo Wild Wings halftime show. Dave Revson, Howard Griffith, Coach Jerry DiNardo will bring you up to the minute scores and highlights and a look around the Big Ten. A Buffalo Wing Wild Wings halftime show is coming up shortly. Plenty to talk about around the conference because Ohio State's loss to USC, while it wasn't a conference loss, did wonders for the confidence of everyone else in the conference. Because let's face it, Tom, coming into the season, it was Ohio State and Chase, right? Yep. Who's going to finish second? That was kind of the battle. But now people see Ohio State as somewhat vulnerable, and they want their shot at them now. Rugby kick. Yep. And a good one. Caught by Robisky. And he is run out of bounds. Looking for a late flag. They're not going to get it on the 29 yard line. That's where Ohio State will put it in play. Today's principal edge of the game is the two quarterback system, Pryor and Beckman, and it's been primarily Pryor so far. You're exactly right because Terrell Pryor ultimately becomes the edge because two should be better than one because of what Beckman can provide. But the way that Terrell Pryor has played so far today, he becomes the principal edge in this game. Enthusiasm that he brings to the field and to the crowd, as well as spectacular playing and playmaking ability. Dreyer out of the shotgun, fakes it to Heron, escapes one tackler, stiff arms another, and is run out of bounds at the 34 yard line, again, at close to five. So, Houdini does it again, Tom Brenneman. We saw him escape on a play that was called back. The pass to Rubisky, where Rubisky was out, out, of side, out, uh, out of bounds. We look at what he's done already today. 37 rushing yards, 65 pass yards, and two touchdown passes. But his escape ability is phenomenal. And we're seeing more and more evidence of it, whether it's the run game or the pass game. Terrell Pryor having a nice afternoon already. And again, for those of you not aware, this is his first collegiate start. He has seen playing time in the first three games of the year. As Heron is looking to get out of trouble, a flag comes in. That might be a face mask. And if so, that's 15 yards more for Ohio State. No more five-yard face mask penalties on the in the rule book. Personal foul. Face mask. Number 20 on the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. As Terrence Moore, number 20. Let's see where he gets him. He's trying to play off the block of Hartline. Actually, wow. Actually, that should be a no call. Because what they told me in preseason, if we see it again, what I was told in preseason was if you grab there and see, look at that. They got him here. Heron's got him here. And Pryor's got him here. But look, see how his hand comes off? That's supposed to be like grabbing a jersey and you don't get it. It comes off and you're just not supposed to flag it. Ohio State benefited on that one, and Boom Heron got away with one. Brian will run the option, but he'll just keep it all the way. And he picks up a couple of yards, second down and eight. You know, getting back to what you mentioned a moment ago, leading into the year in the Big Ten, it was Ohio State and everybody else at least before the SC right. game and how that perception has changed. Now all of a sudden, if you're Wisconsin, now yes. we know that Minnesota comes here next week, don't want to gloss over that one, but should Ohio State win at home, which they'll be expected to do, a huge battle will take place the following weekend in Madison, where the Badgers believe they are capable of beating Ohio State. And ever since Barry Alvarez went to Wisconsin and put that program into motion to where they are today, and Brett Bielema continuing it, They've always given Ohio State all that they've wanted. And Wisconsin off today, resting before they open at Michigan next week. Flyer throwing incomplete to Sansenbacher. He had Hartline across the middle wide open, but just didn't see him. So and bring up third down and eight. And that's going to happen with a young quarterback, too. Those are the things you have to learn to live with. Not going to get all the reads down pat this early. But getting better all the time. When we talk with Jim Tressel, he talked to us about Terrell Pryor's ability to absorb the offense even when he's just watching things. He does it with mental reps, and his film study, he says, is excellent for a young guy. Ohio State, two for four on third downs today. 
Take a look at the play clock. All the way down to two, and they get it off. And a quick throw to Robisky, and that didn't fool anybody. There is a flag down. Denied first down yardage is the senior out of Chagrin Falls High School, and this will be against Ohio State this time. Illegal motion, number one on the offense. The penalties declined, brings up fourth down. Now the only good thing that comes out of this for Ohio State is the potential to really win the field position battle if Trapasso can kill this ball inside the 10 yard line. This time dropping back for Troy is Fred Turner, number 84. Trapasso trying to pin him inside the 10, and this one has far too much leg on it. 334 to play until halftime. Ohio State leading Troy 14. One again. Big Ten Network football is brought to you by Rotel because you can't start your game day without Rotel's famous queso. By Hotels.com. Hotel reviews from people like you. Welcome to Hotels.com. By high performance Mycogen brand grain corn hybrids. Contact your Mycogen seeds dealer today. First down for Troy from its own 20. And under heavy pressure from James Laurinaitis, Jamie Hampton just has to throw it away. So the clock stops with 3.28 to play until halftime. And Ohio State with a 14-3 lead. If you're just joining us, it has primarily been Terrell Pryor for this entire opening half at quarterback for Ohio State. Just saved just a few odd plays for Todd Beckman. Not even, not, not even a full series for Todd Beckman thus far. Quick throw out of the backfield to Harris, and we keep calling that name Jermail Hines. You may remember that Kurt Coleman, their starting strong safety, a rock solid player, was injured for the season opener against Youngstown State. And all we heard about from Jim Tressel and Jim Haycock, their defensive coordinator, was about this young sophomore out of Glenville High School, number seven, Jermail Hines. And he's making plays all over the field today. By far, they're leading tackle. As they, as they say in the, in the parlance, now we understand. <laughs> Indeed. I get it. Free play again. And a catch is made over the middle. And crossing midfield of the 49-yard line is Andrew Davis, a junior out of Dellum, Alabama. That's Outside a gain of 27. The defense. That penalty be declined. Play results in a first down. I remember earlier how I talked about how this hurry up offense puts a real stress on defensive linemen. Todd Denlinger, number 92, jumped on the play, so they get a free one, and Andrew Davis splits the secondary before he's hit by Coleman and gets a big first down. But what Ohio State's doing now to combat all the running they have to do against the spread is rotating full defensive lines in and out. Harris on the carry. Picks up three to the 45. Clock still running now at 2.30 to play until halftime. We see the offensive group for Troy, all the different guys signaling them. One of them is live. The other two are dummy signals so that no one can pick it up. It's actually another guy, the, the backup quarterback signaling. Neil Brown, the offensive coordinator, 28 years old, an aficionado of this spread. Tony Franklin, now the offensive coordinator at Auburn. He tutored under him, played in this system at Kentucky under Hal Mummy, and is trying to refine it here at Troy. A missed tackle by Freeman. It's Jernig into the 20. Still on his feet inside the 10. And he is into the end zone. A touchdown for Jarrell Jernig in a 45 yards. Well, he had a linebacker, Marcus Freeman, trying to stay with him. And more than likely, that's not going to work for a defense. Well, two things they always say about speed, Tom. Number one, if you don't recruit speed, you'll chase it. In this case, they're chasing Jarrell Jernigan. And the second thing about the spread is that every tackle you make because it's open field could be touchdown saving. In this case, there were four or five missed tackles that didn't save anything. Six points for Jarrell Jernigan and Troy. Boy, and all of a sudden, after Troy got the football back with around three minutes to play in the half, starting this drive from its own 20, 
They get the big pitch and catch to Jernigan for a touchdown to draw within four. Count the missed tackles. The first one was Freeman. The second one, Coleman. There's another one there. And then Coleman unable to get him down. That was Hines. Three or four missed tackles all along the way. Jamie Hampton is going to get credit for a long touchdown pass. But the ball went near, what, about 10 yards? And Jarrell Jernigan made it all happen from there. Look at that. Open field tackling at a premium versus spread offenses because usually it's one on one in the open field and that's very difficult to do. One of the toughest techniques to perfect in football is open field one on one tackling. You got to you got to think the offense player is going to have the advantage knows where he wants to go. Plus is usually a quick shifty guy <laughs> that they want to have touch the football difficult task. A few people journeyed here from Alabama to check things out didn't they? Indeed they did. Why not? I mean, this is a, a rock solid this. program. You know, on the rise in Division 1A is Troy University. Maurice Wells, number 34, waiting back for Ohio State. And that one is through the end zone. I invite you to stick around not only at halftime, but after the game for the Big Ten Football Saturday postgame show presented by Hotels.com. Your primary source for highlights and analysis from all of today's Big Ten action. It's a big drive here, Tom, with a minute 49 to go, and here's why. You do not want to turn the ball over three and out immediately to Troy, who just scored a touchdown and now is very excited about getting the ball back on offense. If you're Ohio State, you got to find a way to at least get this clock bled out and go into the half, if not score yourself. Well, they look like they're going to try and make something happen. A five receiver set, an empty backfield for Pryor out of the shotgun. And Pryor will keep it himself with some room to run. Out to the 30, still on his feet, tripped up out to the 37 yard line. That'll be a first down. They'll stop the clock momentarily while they reset the chains. He is so smooth running the ball, you think that he's not putting much effort into it. I mean, he's just, just the way he glides. But there's a little force to him at the end of the run, too. Watch. As he finishes it and he try, they try to make the tackle, he still finishes it moving forward. The running option this time. And he breaks into the open field. Trying to get to the sideline. He's to the 44 of Troy, and again, the clock stops this time with a minute 19 to go. Boy, did he freeze Tavares, Tavares Williams, number 15, the safety on the fake. Watch as he goes down the line. It looks like he's going to pitch. Looks like he's going to pitch. Freezes him and then cuts inside. And off he goes. Boy, he looks awfully comfortable for a true freshman making his first start in college football, doesn't he? Sure does. Nine rushes, 75 yards, call it 74 yards for Terrell Pryor. He's hit on five of eight. Passing. And a couple of cut touchdown passes, and he's looking for more. Rolls wide open along the far side out of the backfield is Brandon Smith, the senior from Euclid. And he has the first down. They'll spot it at the 30-yard line. How about the pocket presence here because a freshman quarterback, how many reads does he have? Looking left, nope. Scans the middle, no. Scans the right side, no. Moves out of the pocket and goes really to, I think, his third or fourth read and dumps it off to a former tight end turned fullback, Brandon Smith. Takes the hit, but look where he's focused. Still downfield, eyes on the target. First and 10 at the 31. Pryor rolling left. Here coming a little shovel pass. It's caught by Nickel, but the clock will continue to run. Ohio State may have to burn a timeout, and they will. Timeout, Ohio State. Their first timeout, a 30-second timeout. This isn't exactly how Jim Bowman or Jim Trestle draw. This is not how they draw it up. But there's Terrell Pryor trying to make a play. He's got a little verve to him, doesn't he? And I get a little bit of edge, and I think the team needs that right now. It's a team that needs something a little bit different. And even though that wasn't totally successful, I think that his teammates will look at him and say, boy, I like his effort. He doesn't give up on any play. It's amazing how one game can change the entire look of a team. Jim Trestle told us yesterday, when I was recruiting, we were recruiting Terrell Pryor. I looked him right in the eye, and I said, look, in a perfect world, 
you're only going to play every now and again. Todd Beckman's going to lead the Big Ten in passing. He's going to take us to a 13 and 0 record and win a national championship. You'll rarely get on the field. Right. After the loss, a couple of key interceptions, one brought back for a touchdown. Jim Bowman, the offensive coordinator in the middle of that trio, along with Coach Daniels, the quarterback coach, they decided they're going to give the kid a chance. Yeah, he told him, hey, your goal is to come in here and beat him out. That should be your goal. And it looks like that is taking place this afternoon. Handed off to Brandon Sane. And he carries to the 28 yard line. Clock now down to 34. And again, Ohio State will stop it. Second timeout. Time Ohio State, their second charge timeout. Well, the Buckeyes have one timeout remaining. It's been a nice drive. I mean, the worry for Ohio State as we laid out, laid it out before the, the snaps began was you cannot give up the ball three and out here to a team that just scored a touchdown and feels good about itself. Mission accomplished already. Now they have an opportunity to put points on the board. In other words, answering the challenge will feel a whole lot better going to the locker room than just saying, okay, we survived the first half. Big mental edge for Ohio State if they put points on the board here. You know, Charles, we asked Jim Trussell yesterday, is there a danger of making this change at quarterback? I mean, let's face it, yes. the Ohio State team, they voted their team captains, one of them, Todd Beckman. He's yes. been around here. This is his sixth year, second year as a starter. And Coach Trussell said, look, your friends are going to tell you one thing. <laughs> They're not going to tell you the truth more than likely. More than likely. That's why you're probably good, pretty good friends with them. <laughs> so he said, you know, there might be some guys telling Todd Beckman or telling somebody else in a different position, hey, you ought to be playing. But he'd like to think that the coaching staff has always been fair to everybody in this situation, no different. Pryor scrambling around, still on his feet, now in heavy trouble. And down he goes all the way back to the 45. And every now and then the exuberance of youth will put you into a play you can't have which is taking a big sack and a big loss when you're already in field goal time range. Out for an injured player. He tried to make it just one play too long. If he'd gotten rid of it on the, uh, you know, a certain point, fine, live to fight another down. But because he thinks he can get out of everything, this is what you live with. This is not a criticism. This is what Ohio State knew going in. He's gonna make a lot of big time plays. He's gonna make some mistakes. You have to live with some of the mistakes until he learns how to correct them. Kenny Manier, the injured player, Senior out of Brunswick, Georgia. One of their best pass rushers. He was the one who put the final pressure and brought down Terrell Pryor. Hope he's going to be okay. They've got three defensive ends who can flat out play at Troy. Kenny Maynard being one of them. It's a nice ovation from the crowd. A very classy group here in Columbus. Now between Kenny Maynard, Brandon Lang, number 91, and Cameron Sheffield from number 90. They'll put a lot of pressure mm -hmm. on a lot of people that they're going to play. They look at the scoring so far today. The Ohio State opens up. Touchdown pass to Rell Pryor to Rory Nickel. Great interception by Kirk Coleman, the first of his career. The safety for Ohio State. And then Pryor with great pocket presence. Finds Brian Hartline for his second touchdown of the game. And then Jamie Hampton to Jarrell Jernigan, who really makes it happen. Three or four different Buckeyes have a chance. They don't get him. And that's where we are now. 14 to 10 Ohio State heading into the end of the half. Now Ohio State spent a timeout with one second after the play clock had started, which leads you to believe they're going to go ahead and throw a Hail Mary here on the final play. Why not? I, I, I think it's a right play. I mean, punting doesn't do you any good at this point. What, what, what does that mean? Try and fling one up. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit too far for a field goal attempt. Ball's on the 44 or so. To kick that, boy, where's my math? It'd be a 60-plus yard field goal <laughs> attempt. That's a long way. Try and fling one up. Maybe you get lucky. Remember, the half can't end on defensive pass interference. You'd get a free untimed play if that were to occur. Not quite the same situation, but you and I were staring at a fourth and 20 at the Fiesta Bowl a couple <laughs> of years ago. The and, old hook and ladder. Boy, and, and could not have been run any better, huh? Could not have been run any better. And by Boise State in their shocking win over Oklahoma. Pryor just going to loft it to the end zone. Jump ball. And was it intercepted or just incomplete? They're signaling the touchback, which leads me to believe that it's intercepted. Otherwise, they would have signaled incomplete pass. Well, Ohio State saying that a Buckeye has a ball at the bottom of that pile. 
but I saw the official wave yep. touchback sign. So I don't think it's going to be reversed in Ohio State's favor. But let's see who it is. It's Tavares Williams. Uh, there he is. He wins the jump ball number 15 in the middle of the pack. It's still a good idea by Ohio State to try and get points on the board. Doesn't hurt anything but Terrell Pryor's, Pryor's individual record. Surprisingly, here at halftime, it is 14 to 10. Ohio State leading Troy. Let's send it downstairs to Carissa Thompson. Oh, I beg your pardon. We're going to hold off on that. And let's do it now. Carissa. Coach, overall, you pleased with Terrell Pryor's performance? Well, you know, he's had a lot of opportunities to do some things, a lot of learning, you mm -hmm. know, and, and uh, we'll have to look at it closely, but he's making some plays. Mm -hmm. On the defensive side of the ball, the difficulty, obviously, in the open field with that one-on-one -on -one tackling, what will be your emphasis there? Well, they caught us in man there and broke a tackle, and that's tough. And, you know, sometimes you go and put pressure, and you get them, sometimes they get you. I appreciate the time. Thanks, Coach. Oh, Jim Trestle, very hoarse. Here at halftime today, he's obviously been doing a, a lot of yelling and screaming, a lot of coaching over there. You, you thought that he was even a little more animated today before the game than we've ever seen. I thought in pregame when I watched Jim Tressel, when he brought the team out to run onto the field, I saw him going through the ranks, encouraging, getting guys fired up. I talked with some people here in Columbus who have indicated this has been a heck of a week here in practice for Ohio State. Not a tear you down practice, but hey, darn it, if we're going to be as good as Ruth want to be, Let's get after it. And I heard they got after it pretty well this week in Columbus. So I think we're seeing the remnants of the whole week with Jim Trestle's voice. It started out as a simple football cheer. Today, it has become more, much more. A bond between students, teachers, and alumni. A proud union that makes the world a better place through research and service on campus and around the world. It's an expression of community for Buckeyes everywhere. Well, we are back at halftime in Columbus, and this sellout crowd, I think, a bit stunned right now. You know about the loss last week against USC. They come back home to take on Troy, a team you wouldn't think they're taking for granted. And so far in the first half, it has been all Terrell Pryor outside of a less than a handful of plays to the senior Todd Beckman at quarterback. A lot of poise from the youngster to go along with some great playmaking ability. Two touchdown passes, used his legs to his great advantage in the first half prior to the last sack of the half, where he took a 16 yard loss, hit 75 yards rushing on the day. Running the option, quarterback draws, and then when he was pressured in the pocket, he didn't always look to just flush. He still kept his eyes downfield and threw some nice passes. Well, this one a long way from being decided. Troy only down four. Second half kickoff with Troy getting the ball in a moment. All season long, Champion Apparel will be showcasing the tradition and history of the Big Ten. Today, we spotlight Archie Griffin, Ohio State's incredible running back. Griffin is perhaps best known for being the only two-time Heisman Trophy winner in history after taking home the award in 1974 and 1975. With Griffin in the backfield, the Buckeyes went 45-1 and, and won four Big Ten titles between 1972 and 1975. Griffin is the only player ever to start in four consecutive Rose Bowl games and holds NCAA records for most 100-yard games, most consecutive 100-yard games, and most average yards per carry. Archie Griffin, champion. It's how you play. We remind you our copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Big Ten Conference and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Big Ten Conference. 14-10, we're set to begin the second half in Columbus. Troy will get the football. Watch out for the sunlight, we were told, Tom, on that end about handling the ball. And taking a knee will be Jora Calvin. Let's take a look at the Mycogen. First half statistics, high performance Mycogen brand green corn hybrids. And neither team really proficient on third down. Time of possession nearly even. And in a game like this, both of them fighting to control the tempo, that tells you that neither one has fully taken charge just yet in how they want to run this football game. Troy will come out again trying to amp things up 
with a no huddle offense. Their quarterback, Jamie Hampton, hit on 16 of 21. Very efficient for 146 yards, one touchdown and one interception. Another delay of game. How does that happen? Sideline. Delay of game on the offense. Five yard penalty. I mean, Charles, really, how in the world does that happen? There's no explanation because the rules has been changed. You know, you're not coming off of that where it's a dead ball and the book clock starts on snap. The 40 second clock gets wound as soon as the ball is placed and marked for play. So now instead of first and 10, it's first and 15. And a throw to Dewan Harris out of the backfield. And coming up is Anderson Russell to make the tackle. Let's check in with Carissa Thompson. Well, guys, catching up with Troy coaches at halftime. Obviously, if I caught up with them now, they'd be a little bit more upset with those penalties of delay of game. Now, most importantly, I said, how do you stop Terrell Pryor? They didn't have any specific answers on that. But most importantly, they said he's 6'6", 235. They, he makes you miss. But either way, they're happy with their performance overall, hanging in this game 14 to 10. Quarterback draw. And out to the 27-yard line is Jamie Hampton. Lawrence Wilson wrapped him up. It'll be third down after a gain of six. Well, maybe we do have the answer to why there was a delay of game penalty on Troy coming out. Carissa was trying to talk to the coaches. That had to be it. Let's blame Carissa. They were being polite and talking to Carissa. Carissa, you're taking the blame. You're taking the hit on that one. There are a lot of guys that'll slow things down to talk to Carissa. No question about that. Second. Third, uh, they only converted twice so far on third down, but looks like they picked up this one. How about that? And on running first inside. and 15. You're right, Tom. First and 15. And what did I say in the first half? Know your personality. Hard, hard to run the ball inside on Ohio State, even in short yardage. And in this case, they did it. It's a really tough team, and the strength of their offense. We talked about those, those wide receivers, but really the offensive line they see as a strength. A group that has plenty of experience and knows how to work together. Dewan Harris again the reception out of the backfield and he's still on his feet still on his feet plowing out to the 45 and that'll be another first down for the Trojans. What a great job by Cherry number 86 Patrick Cherry with a wonderful block out wide engaging Jermail Hines number seven watch to the right of your screen look at 86 right there. Great job blocking on Jermail Hines. And by the time Hines is able to fall off of him and help make a tackle, it's another five or six yard pickup. They fake the handoff one way, Hampton rolling the other, and he'll just step out of bounds after a pickup of almost four. Let's go back to our Suzuki ATV's keys to the game. Said no speed limit for the Troy team. They wanted to run a lot of plays. They ran 30 in the first half. The Trojan Triangle. Boris Lee, Bear Woods, you know, they, they were occupied a little bit. Ohio State opened up the, opened up and ran the ball pretty well in the first half. Ohio State, red alert, one for one in the red zone in the first half. And Troy, 24 rush yards against the revamped defensive line of Ohio State. Well, handed off to Harrison. Lots of running room right up the gut. And he's all the way to the Ohio State 38 yard line. That'll be another first down. Dewan Harris did not receive a single football scholarship offer coming out of high school. He visited Florida A&M and wound up at Troy. And he ended up following another former walk on number 30. Nathan Nolan was a former linebacker walk on. They moved to fullback. What a great job. And what they did there was they've been using most of their runs as side to side runs Tom lateral this time they hit it up inside almost a downhill type run and I think they gashed it didn't think they did gash Ohio State on that play what a drive here to begin the second half and the catch is made inside the 30 down to the 28 yard line that'll be a gain of eight Michael Terry with the reception he's picking up a little bit the first two possessions of the game for Troy both ended in punts then they kicked the field goal after a 52 yard drive nine and nine plays the interception by Kirk Coleman another punt and then the touchdown to Jarrell Jernigan and this is their first time with the football since that touchdown and they hand it off to Maurice Greer and he has first down yardage to the Ohio State 25. What a journey it has been for Maurice Greer number 27 Mr. Football in high school at Colorado committed to CU. Wound up at Garden City Community College in Kansas. He was diagnosed with testicular cancer. Sat out a year. 
His weight ballooned to 260 pounds. He's down to 225 now at Troy. First down catch is made along the sideline to Justin Bray in another five-yard pickup. I think they're bringing this one back. I'm not sure that they're going to call that as complete. I thought I saw on the sideline the official wave it off and say out of bounds because I'm looking where they're marking the football. That's not where he caught the football. Nope. That's, that's the original line incomplete. of scrimmage. That's the original line. That's an incomplete pass. So they're saying the receiver was out of bounds. But this even in the fi this five wide receiver set is keeping Ohio State's pass rush down. Flags litter the field. They just got the playoff. Now another flag is thrown. And the catch is made down to the 12-yard line, but we're going to hold everything. Burden on the receiving end of that throw from Hampton. And it's in the vicinity of number 65, Chris Jamison, the starting left tackle. Now the reason the legal procedure and a hold, so Ohio State will take the bigger one. But the reason the other pass was incomplete was the receiver's first foot came down out of bounds, so it was the correct call. There are two fouls on the play. Illegal formation, that penalty's declined. Holding number 65 on the offense. 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat second down. Sam, before by formation with five wide receivers in the pattern, you would think, hey, maybe I can get a better pass rush. But because there's five receivers in the pattern, it takes people out of the box to cover receivers. And Ohio State's at front four not getting to Jamie Hampton because he's getting rid of the ball quickly, too. They don't have the right personnel in the game now. They're going to need a timeout. Time out. So, their first timeout. You almost wonder, Charles, sometimes is it you just do too much? Well, you know, I was starting to get to that. I mean, there gets to a point in time where you run so many different people in and out of the game. I don't think it would be a surprise that you have things like this happen more frequently. I, I agree with you. When you're running that many receivers, that many formations, that many personnel groupings, if you have one guy who forgets on a certain play or a guy who gets hurt and is not communicated well to the coaching staff and they call for that set, right? It could be anything. His shoe came untied, he can't get out on the field, or he just lost track. It could be anything. The Superfan program has even more ways to earn points. Tune into every Big Ten Network game and listen for the in-game trivia question. The answer correctly online to earn 1,000 points. Go to BigTenNetwork.com and follow the Superfans link. Today's question, how many consecutive 100-yard games did former Buckeye running back and Heisman Trophy winner Eddie George achieve while at Ohio State? Well, I, can, I, I know I can't give any answers, but it wasn't as many as Archie Griffin. No. Okay. Play clock down to 10 on the second down and 20. Great protection lofted down the middle of the field and Kurt Coleman picked it off. What a play by Coleman. It looked like he got undercut by his teammate James Laurinaitis. Came down very hard and he's not yet gotten back up. Yeah, they're hoping it's just the wind getting knocked out of it. This is a guy who came into this game, Tom, with zero career interceptions. He has two on the day. He took it upon himself. He had a meeting with the coaches. Look at the as you look at the interception. With the coaches in the offseason, what does it what is it he needed to work on? Making more plays. You tackle well, you could do okay in coverage. You gotta make big plays. So he worked in the offseason with Michael Doss and Will Allen, both NFL players, former Buckeyes, on how to become a better playmaker. I think those lessons are paying off. A couple good guys to learn from. Breyer back under center. He'll give it off to Daniel Boom Heron. And he's out across the 10, out to the 12 yard line. A big gain of five. Let's take a look at the Ohio State possessions today. That opening drive, very impressive. And things pretty quiet until they got it for the fourth time. Yeah, the three straight punts, but then again, Pryor makes a big play with his legs and his eyes, and ultimately his arm. They punt. The interception in the half was a throwaway. They threw a Hail Mary. It didn't matter. You know, nothing but a statistic there. But overall, they'd like to see more consistency in their drives getting downfield. 
Ball at a gain of six for Heron. He'll get it again, and he has first down yardage out across the 20 to the 23, and a late flag comes in after the tackle was made. A redshirt freshman, Daniel Boom Heron, they called him, out of Warren, Ohio. Personal foul. Face mask, number 15 on the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. He does run like a bigger player, doesn't he? Watch here. Watch Ben Person come around and watch the block he gets to help spring Boom Heron. Look at this. There's Smith, 87. Person locking up. Cordell, 64 on his man. And then Boom lowers the boom on number 15, Tavares Williams. Really, the face mask should have gone against number 98, Deion Gales, reaching over the top. Tavares Williams did nothing wrong, but he did get trucked. As they like to say, Boom Heron knocking him over on that run. And again, for those of you that did not join us early on, third straight game, Ohio State is playing without its junior All-American running back, Chris Beeney Wells. Kurt Coleman shaken up a moment ago, and for more on that, here's Carissa. Yeah, you guys saw him. His teammates tried to pick him up right after he picked off that pass. It took him a second on the second attempt. He was able to walk off the field. He removed his helmet immediately and just kept shaking his head, sat on the end of the bench, and has just now gotten up after that. So just visibly shaken up on that last play. Yeah, thank you, Carissa. The one thing that will make him feel better, he kept he held on to the football mm -hmm. after that. He'll feel he'll feel fine by the next series. I'm betting. A big interception indeed for Coleman on the first drive of the second half for Troy. Daniel Boom Heron is out to the 45-yard line. Third down and four upcoming. So the first game post USC. All the high hopes, the huge expectations for Ohio State at the time, ranked fifth in the country. And they were walloped by the Trojans, 35 to 3. They come back here in a game that, whether they had won at SC or lost at SC, certainly would present some problems. You're playing a very talented, very well coached Troy University team. And Ohio State comes back home after the loss with a freshman at quarterback. And Pryor is dragged down for a loss on third down and five, and Ohio State will have to punt it. Troy strung this play out very well, and you'll notice the quarterback to running back pitch ratio gets reduced to the point where you have no pitch. Watch Terrell Pryor. Boom, Heron still has to keep moving, but now, see right there where it stops? They're starting to get too close together. That means this guy right there can guard too. See, he doesn't have to worry about just take, being taken out to one guy. Made things a lot easier for the Troy defense. Terrell Jernigan calls for a fair catch at the six. 52-yard punt by A.J. Trapasso. 8.20 to go in the third. Ohio State leading by four. Big Ten Network football is brought to you by high-performance Mycogen brand grain corn hybrids. Contact your Mycogen seeds dealer today. Well, we've got a football game here in Columbus. Roy coming up. From the state of Alabama, Troy University, about 40 minutes south of Montgomery, Alabama. Trailing 14 to 10, they hand it off to Dewan Harris, and he picks up two. Starting this drive from their own six-yard line, Thaddeus Gibson, the sophomore from Euclid, makes the tackle. Look at what Troy has done thus far this year. 64 plays, 300 yards, beat Middle Tennessee State. And that's a good win. Alcorn 107 plays over 700 yards of total offense. Ball came loose, but it looks like it'll still belong to Troy on the catch to Fred Turner. He ran out of one tackle and picked up about three more yards to put him in a pretty good spot for third down. Watch the end of the play. The Malcolm the Jenkins. Out of bounds. It will be brought back to the spot of the fumble. Wraps him up. Then the last hit there to help pop it free. That's a defensive lineman coming down the line and making the big hit. And on third down, they hand it off to Harrison. He has a first down out to the 24-yard line. That has been a very effective play when they needed to go on third and short yardage. So much for the personality of a team throwing it on third and short, which is what they did in the first half. Now in the second half, second and short, third and short, they're running it inside and picking up the necessary yardage. They throw it to Harris. 
And looking for a hole somewhere that just never came about. You know, Tom, as we approach this game, I was talking with some Big Ten people and some Ohio State people, and, and I just said, you know, they're one of those esoteric stats. You know, Ohio State's never beaten a team from the state of Alabama in college football. Ha, 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 ha. Everybody kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're thinking Auburn, Alabama, the two teams they face. Didn't really see it with this team. All of a sudden, that esoteric thing now becomes something that you would get concerned about. Troy hanging in this ball game. Boy, are they ever. Great protection. Now flushed out of the pocket is Hampton being chased and stayed on his feet. He takes a hit, but he's out to the 30 yard line, which again will bring up a third down in less than three. And what a big time decision by the sophomore quarterback, Jamie Hampton. Why? He didn't force anything. You see 20, 20 out of 27. The interceptions that he's thrown have been big time catches by Coleman. The second one way worse than the first one, which was juggled. But I think he's made good decisions for the most part all game long on that one. He doesn't force it downfield and picks up yardage to make it third and four. Harris standing right next to him out of the shotgun. They're going to throw it this time. Or are they? Yep. And was the catch made? Yes, it was. And that's good enough for another first down to Zach Markham. Remember how we praised Terrell Pryor for his vision in the pocket and being able to maneuver and complete the play. That's exactly what Jamie Hampton did. A nice job by Markham on the sideline, keeping his feet in bounds. But Hampton moved out of the pocket, looked like he was going to take off and run, kept his eyes downfield and found an open receiver and delivered it for a first down. Ohio State showing blitz. Here comes Marcus Freeman. They pick it up. And out to the 42 yard line. The catch is made by Andrew Davis. We talked about how 20 different receivers last season had at least one reception for Troy. 13 different receivers had touchdowns. Ten of those guys are back this year. They hand it off to Harrison. He has another Troy first down to the 48 yard line. And, and they came into the game with 17 different people who had caught a pass thus far this season. But right now, to me, the story is that Troy has, by attrition, tired out the defensive front a little bit of Ohio State. You notice how many guys are rolling yep. in and out, Tom? The defensive front, they're even playing guys we hadn't talked about, trying to find someone fresh to come on the field and chase this Troy spread offense. Set up the screen and still on his feet, still on his feet. Crossing midfield, missed tackles all over the place for Ohio State. Broke one of Hines, broke another of Laurinaitis, and that's a gain of four. And you feel the impatience starting here in Ohio Stadium? You're starting to sense it and hear it a little bit? When they missed a couple tackles on that play, this is that type of an offense. It's relatively rare that this offense is totally shut down. You just try and shut, hold them down enough that your offense can score enough to get you a win. Quarterback keeper Hampton. And he'll be denied first down yardage. Got to the 45. They need to get just inside the 43. So another very important third down coming up. Tyler Clark with a decent block on the play. But look at Laura Knight is spinning off of it. He did what they call opposite shoulder. Gave him the inside shoulder. And then on the spin move, tried to fall back into the play. And get it, get into it, get, get into it to give his teammates a little bit of help. Third and short. They have run it inside, Tom. I think they throw it here. Well, they threw the last time on third and short on third and four. Yeah. Tyler Clark moving number 58. Ball start. Number 58 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat third down. Glad they definitely are throwing it here. <laughs> how about that for how about that for, for a hint? You are really going out of limb. You know? Although you know the way they've called plays, they've done it brilliantly here today. What they've done is they've taken a lot of pressure off their offensive line with their play calling by not holding the ball very long in the passing. You know, the ball's out of the quarterback's hands. That way you don't have to hold your blocks that long. Third and two after the penalty goes to third and seven. They will throw it. Hampton to the near side. And what a play made by Chekwa. Now that's an open field tackle to deny first down yardage. Jim Day Chekwa got so much playing time last year as a freshman, and he started every game this year. 
Donald Washington suspended for the first two games. May not get his starting job back for a while. Chekwa continues to play this well. Remember, he had the interception at USC right before the half that kept USC from totally closing out Ohio State at that point. Still giving them a little bit of hope. And that's, as you pointed out, a huge open field tackle to force a punt from Troy. Hard line and Robisky drop deep. And it'll go into the end zone. 241 to play in the third quarter. Pryor and Ohio State come back on offense. He's won 13 Big Ten titles, three and five national championships. Not bad. Not bad. I think that'll work. And Earl Bruce, one of his key assistants, who later became the head coach here at Ohio State. And he was the coach that started a true freshman at quarterback here at Ohio State. Actually, it wasn't Earl, no, it wasn't Earl Bruce. Earl took over as a sophomore. It was Woody's last season. And that's when Art Schleister started. Speaking of Woody, someone always channeling the spirit of Woody Hayes <laughs> at Ohio State. Well, that's a big word right there, channeling. <laughs> Daniel Heron out to the 38 yard line. You want to define that channeling? Well, all I know, I, I'll channel this. If Woody were alive, he'd come back and tackle that guy for wearing his look. <laughs> You're right about that. <laughs> only, only one guy looks like this in this state, my man. And that would be Woody. Hey, by the way, in 1968, Troy won an NAIA national championship. Yes, they did. Well, they have a 40 year celebration this and they, season. They, they just had the team back for the season opener at home against Alcorn. Now they continue to stay on the ground prior trying to turn the corner and he takes a hit. Maybe getting back to the line of scrimmage so primarily here in the second half of this true freshman quarterback they have not thrown the ball vertically down the field and I think that they're going to need to because I think they've got to stretch things out a little bit because now what's happening is Troy is starting to really work on focusing inside the run game with Boom Heron and focus strictly on Terrell Pryor's legs. I think eventually they're going to have to use his arm a little bit more to try and stretch things back out. Fire out of the shotgun will throw it this time and lost it too tall for Dane Sansenbacher. So Ohio State is forced to punt again. Great coverage there by the free safety number six, Sherrod Martin. That was a play that Terrell Pryor wanted to loft and let Sansenbacher run underneath it. But Martin had such good coverage, it needed to be a pass that he had to deliver on the line. And he'll learn the difference. Still, good pocket presence, not distracted, even though number 95, Maurice Coleman, was diving at it from the side. So Paso, a low line drive. Oh, you got to catch that one, young man. You got to catch it. Know why? Because you just put your team in a real stress. Catch the football, make a fair catch. You just cost your team 20 yards. That's the end of the third quarter. A 60 yard punt after the bounce inside the five. So a scoreless third quarter for both teams. We're off to the fourth. Jernigan failed to catch the punt. This drive starts for Troy inside its own two yard line. To watch Jarrell Jernigan. You know, he's waving his guys off, but go get the football. As a punt returner, your primary job is to go catch. He could signal fair catch. Did you see where he was? Outside the 20. Where does the ball end up? Inside the two. The area of hidden yardage. You'll never see it on a stat sheet but it changes field position, play calling, where you are in the, this stage of the game. I understand maybe he thought he couldn't handle it, but boy, that's a tough one. Well, I got an injured player being helped off the field for Troy. They're starting left guard, Tyler Clark. And look at Troy's pass yard is jumping up now to 210, Ohio State only 79 for the game. Second down and nine. Oh, right through the hands of Jermail High 
means he should have had six without even taking a step. He got hurt earlier in the game and has an extra wrap on one of his hands right now, which may account for it. But this ball hit him right in the mitts. And he's unable to come down with it. My old coach John Majors would have said, that's why you're a defensive back and not a receiver. But a great break on the football, and that would have changed everything for Ohio State. Third and nine, great protection incomplete. Jernigan surrounded by Ohio State defenders, so now a very short end zone, not field, end zone to work with here for the punter, Will Goggins. See how it all comes together, Tom? All right, now you start on the two or three. You don't make any yardage, you just what you up. Now you got a short field to punt from, a short end zone to punt from, which means your field position now has changed for Ohio State. Good snap. And Goggins gets it away. This will be hard line. And he's inside the 40 at the 37. So the failure to field the punt. A three and out inside the two. And now Ohio State in business leading 14 to 10. Ohio State leading 14 to 10. Larry Blakeney's Troy defense behind the eight ball as Ohio State begins this drive at the Troy 37 yard line. Take a shot. Look for DeVere Posey. Take a shot. Or not. Losing <laughs> his footing, not even getting back to the line of scrimmage is Dan Heron. And we talked about it the last drive at Ohio State, perhaps wanting to minimize mistakes. Yep. Defense. By the true freshman quarterback Terrell Pryor, they have played so close to the vest, if you will, on offense. And the defense is making it stand up. Two interceptions today. Held them on a three, a three and out when they had them deep in the territory, changed field position. So that strategy is working. And Jim Trestle just sent word that he'll call the plays, not me. So we're, uh, we won't get that clear now. <laughs> Fire up under center and he's going to throw it and looking down the field and it is lofted to Robisky. He's got it. Touchdown. You sure you're not calling a place? We were just off one play on communication. Play action, the reason you take the shot, your defense just held. Nice job, momentum, and field position. You're not gonna get better field position than that to start a drive. Second and nine, they took one deep. I thought he'd go on first down, but hey, first down, second down, Ohio State doesn't care. That's six points. Brian Robisky. All Big Ten performer, all academic performer as well. 38-yard touchdown. An 11-point Ohio State lead. Dave Revson in our Big Ten Network studios as we check in on Purdue and Central Michigan. Kind of surprisingly low-scoring game. The Boilers getting the defensive touchdown here. Frank Duong brings it back 58 yards. Central Michigan just missed a field goal, so it's still 17-10 Purdue. Dave, thank you very much. 38-yard touchdown strike to Rell Pryor. His third touchdown pass of the afternoon. It comes to Brian Robisky with 13-28 to play in Columbus. And Ohio State ranked 14th in the country. They've been in a tough one here today against Troy. 21-10 game. And still a long way to go. Maurice Greer just took it away from Calvin. And Greer on his feet out to the 31-yard line. Tom, you talked about Maurice Greer earlier today. If you've beaten testicular Kansas and return to the playing field, you're not about to let someone else catch the ball and run with it when <laughs> you get an opportunity. Give me that thing. You have made a real choice about playing. Hats off to that young man. 
I mean, he was recruited as one of the top 10 running backs in the country coming yeah. out of high school. We mentioned he was Mr. Football in the state of Colorado. Called him Slash. He was getting all kinds of offers, just didn't have a qualifying score, ended up at the junior college, which is where he fell ill before coming back and ending up at Troy. Fake one way and a quarterback keeper. Malcolm Jenkins will tie up Hampton before Williams comes in to make the tackle behind him. That was very well executed. It was extremely well blocked because all he did on the fake was one step and just kind of give the impression because what he's done all game long is take that quick snap and just make that one move with the shoulder turn and throw it out towards the sidelines. This time he made that same move except he tucked it down and found a gaping hole into the secondary. Boy, has been very impressive on offense here in the second half. And remember the opening drive to begin the third quarter, they went right down the field and down goes Hampton in the arms of Thaddeus Gibson. But just to finish that thought, I mean, you know, there's a flip side to taking that chance down the field. They took the chance into the end zone, and the pass was intercepted down near the goal line by Kurt Coleman. Exactly as we look at the game summary, 53 plays for Troy. 270 yards at 10 points, 12 prior, 172 yards total, and three touchdown passes. But you're right, Tom, there's always a flip side to the positives. What a play inside. What a play indeed. Read beautifully by Doug Worthington, the junior from upstate New York. And welcome back, Doug Worthington. Expected to be a starter when the season began. Ran into some trouble off the field. Served a suspension for a time, came back, lost his starting job. His first start of the season today. Jim Haycock told us he played the best of all the defensive linemen at USC. And I have a feeling this young man has realized getting a second chance, such as he's getting, will leave him focused all year long. Well, now Goggins in to put it away. And again, it's Hartline and Robisky. We'll have to find out later what has happened to Ray Small. He has not been on the field the entire game. He has a punt return for a touchdown this season. And he leads Ohio State in all purpose yards so far this year. Well, let's take a look at today's Cargill passing combination. Terrell Pryor and the senior Brian Robisky. And Terrell Pryor has spread the ball around six different receivers with catches today. But the big shot on the last series prior to Robisky for the touchdown. They actually almost connected on another one that would have been longer earlier in the game. When Brian Robisky unable to haul in a pass down the middle. Ohio State will continue with their true freshman Terrell Pryor working out of the shotgun. That's Daniel Heron in motion. And Pryor to throw or will he? No, he'll stay on the ground. Cuts it back the other way. Run out of bounds after a pickup of eight. You know, we heard so much about practice this week. And the ratio we were told was about 65-35. Pryor with the first team as opposed to Beckman. Beckman has been on the field for a total of three plays today. Well, the 65 to 35 ratio was explained to us because Terrell Pryor needed more snaps because Todd Beckman's a veteran. He has, he already has it. It was also to get him ready to do what he was doing today, which is carry his thing as far as he could. You're getting the sense that Jim, Jim Tressel has made his decision that Terrell Pryor is now truly the new starting quarterback for Ohio State. Well, that was the next question I was going to ask you. Uh, I think he's made the decision just by how it's gone today. There were opportunities for Todd Beckman to go in, but I think from Jim Tressel's perspective, if I'm going to get this young kid ready to play, I have to let him play through some thick and thin. I can't just totally spoon feed him as we've been doing throughout the season. He's got to play when the ball's on the, our own five yard line. He's got to play when we've got great field position. And this is a great day for him to do it. And he's producing. So why should I change anything? It's amazing how one game can, I'm not going to say change the outlook necessarily, because Ohio State, while, you know, maybe getting back to a third straight national championship game will take some doing. I mean, it took a lot of doing for them to get there last year after they lost for the first time the second to last week of the season. As Heron carries out to the 49-yard line. But, of course, if Ohio State should, quote, unquote, run the table, that's a tall order. We know all about that. They get into a BCS game again and head out to the Rose Bowl. Now that is a long way from occurring, but 
all of a sudden it looks like they're willing to take that chance at least based on today with a true freshman quarterback. I had a coach tell me a long time ago that sometimes as Boom Heron, you saw you just mentioned what a great run that 75 yards on the game and I'll finish that thought after this play Tom. And he'll go oh, he breaks it to the outside playing peekaboo behind the blocker in front of him. That was Jim Porter. And he carries all the way to the 41 yard line. Boom does run like a bigger guy and sometimes it pays to be a smaller guy. He kind of got lost in the backfield there didn't he. Well, for more on Terrell Pryor, let's go downstairs to Carissa Thompson. Well, guys, uh, Terrell Pryor has pointed to the crowd three times today, one after each touchdown, and he's pointing to that guy, the guy in the yellow shirt, his big brother, Tyrone. I spoke to Tyrone and asked him which one of Terrell's TDs was his favorite. He laughed. He said the last one, and I asked him to give me some dirt on his little brother. He said, I don't got any dirt. Just got to let you know he's a good golfer. Well, in that case, he's not coming out with us. There's no good golfers allowed with us. And then he almost he almost threw one that could have gone the other way. The bear was lurking in the forest, and that's Bear Woods number 48. But that's got to be a very proud brother, Tyrone Pryor. But as I was saying before, Tom, to finish my thought, sometimes it's what you if you don't take chances. Sometimes you put your team at risk. I think that's what Jim Tressel is here. You take this opportunity with this talent, and he might provide you something you just didn't have before. Brandon Sane on a second down carry picks up three. Clock under nine minutes, 8.45 and counting. Coming up after the ball game, the Big Ten Football Saturday postgame show presented by Hotels.com. Your source for highlights and analysis from all of today's Big Ten action. Well, if, if Terrell Pryor is such a good golfer, we'll have to get Carissa to find out for us what he thinks of the Ryder Cup pairings and how Captain Azinger is doing as the Americans sprint out to a nice lead to get things started. It's not too far from here, just not south of Cincinnati, down in the Commonwealth of Kentucky in Louisville. First time we called his name all day long, Ray Small. And on a third down, a very curious call there. We have not seen Small the entire day. And on third and eight, they lose a yard. But isn't that twice now we've seen the misdirection from Ohio State, and both times it's been played very, very well by Troy, especially by the defensive linemen? They have not bitten on the flow going away and have stayed home and forced that. He, with the, the defensive lineman, I think it was Cameron Sheffield again, forced that play so deep that Ray Small really had no chance to get to the corner and make anything good happen. So now Trapasso on the punt, trying to pin him deep again. This oh, that's well played. Yeah, beautifully covered. Sean Lane getting down the field, and again, Troy pinned inside its own five. So he Today's game is brought to you in part by Nissan. Nissan is the official vehicle of the Big Ten Conference. Twenty-one ten, Ohio State. Seven forty-two to go in Columbus, and Hampton from his own end zone throws behind his intended receiver Jernigan. Second down and ten. Tom, Ohio State has made the decision to go with speed versus this spread. Look at the D lineman. That's Lawrence Wilson, Cameron Hayward, Rob Rose, and Curtis Terry. That's four defensive ends in the lineup. That means two of the guys are inside a tackle using speed versus brawn versus the spread of Troy. Hampton looking around. Now rolls. And that is a catch. Out to the nine yard line from Michael Terry. So third down and five for Troy. Clock winding at 7.20. Watching how they've got him. They're bringing just three guys on the pressure. And it's a good job. Rose flushing him. But then Curtis Terry, number 99, who was playing linebacker, had it dropped initially. He now rushed the passer and actually vacated that area, which allowed the receiver to sneak in and make a catch. 
play of the game so far right now for Troy. If they have any hopes of trying to get back into this thing down 11 with under seven to go, they got to convert. See if Jim Haycock wants pressure or just will rush forward. He just rushes four. Thrown away. Boy, was that play made, Tom. I got to jump in there. Malcolm Jenkins, yep. you saw it too, didn't you? Yep. Number two, Malcolm Jenkins, the start, the All-America corner, totally destroyed that play by jumping the route and sticking with the receiver right from the beginning. Jamie Hampton wanted to throw a short bubble screen to his wide receiver. Jenkins jumped on the route, no chance to go there. That took away any possibility, but he does the smart thing and throws it away. But Ohio State's defense back-to-back -back forcing punts and playing great and, and keeping great field position for the Buckeyes. Well, what a play indeed that was, Charles, by Malcolm Jenkins. Wow. And a bad punt. That's going to bounce the other way. Yes, you got to go get that one. Yep. You could tell. Tail dragger. Yeah. To the right of your screen. You won't see it initially. See, that's where he wants to go with the football. Now he's got nothing because Malcolm Jenkins has swallowed up his number one receiver. But a nice job by Jamie Hampton getting rid of it. Even though he can't hit the receiver, it's out of bounds. He doesn't take a sack. He gives him a chance to punt. But look at this field position for Ohio State. And now, here's what I'm telling them. Jim Bowman, the offensive line coach, offense coordinator. Hey, big fellas, earn your keep. Move some people and let's run this football and have a great drive. Well, they've changed their offensive front. It looks like, again, it's still Brewster in there at center. Cordell is still at left guard. Pryor looking around, looking, looking. Dumps it off to Smith. And he'll stick his nose forward. And get to the 21 yard line. The gain of six. Terrell Pryor on the day. Has hit on 9 of 15. 121 yards so far. Of course, he has three touchdown passes. And on the ground for Pryor. 13 carries, 64 yards. 16 more nullified by a sack near the end of the first half. The good thing is he's being outrushed today by Boom Heron. It means he's getting a little help in the ground game. And I think Ohio State's got to really focus here on the big guys up front, moving people, getting that all that run game going because no one knows and can predict just how long Beanie Wells will be out. They thought he'd be back in a week. Well, they that rushed. obviously has not happened. Yeah, they rushed for well over 200 yards in the season opener with Wells. 162 against Ohio University. The bulk of those coming in the final 15, 20 minutes of that game when the Bobcats were just worn down. Only 71 rushing yards without Wells in the loss at SC. Yeah, I'm 34 carries. Looks like Pryor has a first down. He'll learn to get just a little bit lower on that quarterback sneak. He is 6'6", and it's hard for a big guy, but to get the force and movement you need as a quarterback, they teach you to get real low and get behind those guys and just tuck in. At 6'6", he provides too big of a target. Dan Heron is 11 yards away from his first 100-yard rushing game as a collegian. Pistol formation again. Tail back behind the quarterback who's in a short, short snap position. To the end zone. Touchdown, Brian Hartline. That is not a bad college debut as a starter for Terrell Pryor. They've kept things very conservative, yet that is his fourth touchdown pass of the afternoon. And really one of his better thrown balls, although Hartline really turned it into a great play because the ball sailed just a little bit, and Hartline doesn't worry about the hit, uses his body, goes up and gets it. And a nice touchdown. Brian Hartline, I guess he's used to catching passes from someone, his brother Mike. Is the starting quarterback in Kentucky. I think they have a starting quarterback here in Columbus for the next four years. Well, two touchdowns here in the fourth quarter for Ohio State. Has taken this one from 14 to 10 to 28 to 10. 
And Ohio State has really done a nice job in the second half when things had gotten tight and people were starting to wonder and have questions and maybe even a little bit of doubt creeping into the minds of people. Ohio State has taken control of this game. And this is a good team that they now have an extension of a lead on. Calvin's going to bring it out of the end zone. Still on his feet. And a slam to the ground by Shekwa. The ball comes loose. And they're saying he was down. Torian Washington, number five, was there as well. Today's Hampton Hotel's winning play of the game. A long touchdown pass in the second quarter to Brian Hartline. Touchdown at Hampton and wake up a winner. They made it 14 to 3 at that point for Ohio State. Went to the half up 14 to 10. Two touchdowns here in the second half. Have made it 28-10, Ohio State. With Jamie Hampton rolling, still looking down the field, and he'll just throw it away. You know, you, you do have to feel for Todd Beckman. You brought it up earlier. I mean, it gives you an idea the pressure, the expectations at Ohio State and a number of other places around the country. You wait around for four years to get your chance to be the starter last year. Beckman led the Big Ten in passing efficiency. First 10 games of the year, he threw 23 touchdowns against only eight interceptions. Now, he did struggle the last three games. Illinois, bad field conditions and playing conditions at Michigan and in the no national championship the game against LSU. But here he begins this year as a team captain. They come out and win the first two. Beckman and the entire team plays poorly at SC. And despite being 13 and three as a starting quarterback at Ohio State, he has stood and watched almost this entire game as Terrell Pryor has taken his job. Two things have really conspired against Todd Beckman more than anything. And it's just been this. They didn't, they have not won that so-called big game. You know, another national championship he quarterback last year, and then the USC game. And then you just got a young man behind you just uber talented. I mean, it's just one of those ones where Todd Beckman just says, I don't have that. All right? and, and what that is, is that thing you can't just totally put your finger on. We saw it here today. The almost undefinable. But he's handling it like a champ. We talked with Jim Tressel about it. He gets it. He's not happy about it, which is also okay. But he's doing his best to hang in there and still be the best team guy he can be. Well, Beckman was the last Ohio State quarterback to throw four touchdowns in a game as a flag comes in. That was almost a year to the day, September the 22nd last year against Northwestern. Beckman with four touchdown passes. This flag goes against the Trojans. We tell you about today's Polaris ATV's toughest player of the game. Kurt Coleman. His second interception of the game makes a catch and gets undercut, as you mentioned at the time, Tom, by James Laronitis, the All-American uh, linebacker. He gets up, runs off the field, and is right back on the field for the next defensive possession. But, Tom, here's one thing I think Ohio State fans need to keep in mind. At some point, Terrell Pryor will have a tough game. Hey, it's just no getting around. It happens to everyone. Todd Beckman will be needed in that situation. Good play by Sean Lane and coverage. See, and I think the Ohio State staff understands that, too. This is not a situation where now you've made the change. It's like, oh, okay, Todd, thanks a lot. We were going out with Terrell now. Stay with him. Continue to get his reps in practice. Make sure he's fully involved and engaged. Because if it does come to pass, that's a pretty good backup to have is a guy who's 13 and three as a starter and taking your team already to one Big Ten title. It's pretty clear they are you know, having Pryor go almost the entire way here today, knowing the Big Ten opener is next week. There's an incompleted pass on third down, and Troy will punt it away. Well, the conclusion of this game will send you to the final moments of Central Michigan at Purdue. Purdue leading by seven. Uh, at about seven and a half minutes to go in West Lafayette. 
That's their third meeting with Central Michigan in then about a calendar year. You know, they opened up, they played them early last season, regular season, played them in the Motor City Bowl where Purdue kicked that field goal to win it. And here they are playing again early in the season. The ball will bounce out of bounds at the 25 yard line. We can find out what it takes to be a football player in the Big Ten. Go behind the scenes with Coach Ron Zook and the Fighting Illini, Illinois. The Journey, Tuesday at 9.30 p.m. Eastern on the Big Ten Network. It looks like Ohio State's going to go with a different quarterback now. They're going to go with Joe Bowserman getting an opportunity to play here in mop-up time. And in a sense, Tom, it's almost as if Jim, if Jim Trestle is saving the feelings of Todd Beckman by sending out someone else here. You know, it's been Terrell Pryor's day, obviously. The torch has been passed. There's no getting around it now. We have a new starting quarterback in Columbus. But rather than change everything and move your starting quarterback to mop-up duty, you let him just say, okay, son, we'll work this out. We'll come back on Monday. And you let the third guy go out and take these so-called meaningless snaps. And I think that's a nice job by the Ohio State staff that Todd Beckman did have to go. I was the starter, and now I'm mopping up. I think that would hurt him mentally more than anything. Well, Charles, if there is one thing, if nothing else, if there is one thing we have learned, going back to the national championship game two years ago when you and I had a chance to visit with Jim Trestle. Number 76 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, repeat second down. And this uh, entire Ohio State University football program, last year during the regular season here on the Big Ten Network, again on the BCS coverage, and again the early part of this year, second time we've seen him already. We'll see him again next week. I'm not sure you're going to meet better people than the people that are around this Ohio State football program. They may not win every game. Obviously, they were unable to win it the last two title games, unable to win last weekend at Southern California. But these are first-class people all the way. And, and one way that you find out is Maurice Wells now getting some carries, the senior out of the state of Florida. One of the ways you really find out about people is when some adversity strikes. Now think about what's going on here this week. You live in this state. You've had the power failures. You had the storm come through. People have been without the electricity and power for days. You know, a lot of people on our crew have had to battle that. They just got trounced at USC. And we walk in here to do a ball game. And I'm, I'm still greeted the exact same way I'm greeted when they win games. No adversity. Yep. You know, I know this sounds like a testimonial, but sometimes when people are good people, they deserve to hear about it. And that's the way it is when you come to Ohio State. Win, lose, draw, whatever. They're going to treat you the same way every time. Mm -hmm. There's something to be said for consistency. That'll be a first down for Maurice Wells, and that will be the final play of the afternoon. So a sluggish three quarters in some regards for Ohio State, but one has to remember a true freshman, Terrell Pryor, getting a start at quarterback for the first time in his career, and this is his fourth college game, replacing Todd Beckman. Pryor throws four touchdown passes. He rushes for 66 yards and leads Ohio State to a 28-10 win over Troy. He's awfully, awfully impressive today in so many different ways. The way he handled the offense, the way he handled the attention and the adulation. Not really ruffled even when things don't go quite right. He made some mistakes, but he minimized those and maximized his terrific plays. And I think Jim Trestle and staff will be very happy with him, but he doesn't understand this, and he might now. He's going to get coached harder this week than he's ever been coached before. He's going to make sure he's not going to rest on what he did today because it'll take an elevated effort to beat a Big Ten foe next week. And again, let's be honest about it. I mean, you got Minnesota last week. Tim Brewster trying to build that thing up. Ohio State will be expected to win. They expect yes. to win. Yes. And let's face it, if Pryor gets through that game, a second full game under his belt, then will come without question the biggest test of his very young career when Ohio State has to go to Madison in front of a national television audience once again to take on the Badgers who have a legitimate chance to be undefeated and ranked in the top 10 when that game comes around. Let's go downstairs and join Carissa Thompson. All right, guys, they're going to go over sing. We'll catch up with Terrell and coach right after that. All right, got to go, got to go sing Carmen, Ohio, as they do after every ball game. 
the tradition here they go and sing after every victory with the band. So again, a reminder, we invite you to join us. Same time, same place, a week from today. As Big Ten Conference play begins, the Minnesota Golden Gophers will come to Columbus to take on Jim Trestle's Ohio State Buckeyes. And it will be the conference opener for both teams. And right now, Minnesota jumping on Florida Atlantic. I explain, you know, they should be undefeated coming in here for this game. And nice turnaround already for Minnesota from last year with Tim Brewster. Mm -hmm. They won one ball game all of last year. Florida Atlantic jumped them last year pretty hard. So, so far, Tim Brewster doing a nice job putting together his program in just his second year in Minneapolis, St. Paul. The Ohio State University. Now let's send it down to Carissa Thompson. Well, first of all, congratulations on your first win as a starting part quarterback for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Everyone's going to be talking about your performance. I want a grade from you. What's that? I want a grade from you. What do you think of your performance? Uh, I, I don't really grade. I mean, I just think uh, the line blocked well. I think uh, offensively we played pretty good, and uh, it's time we got to get better. We got win. We got a championship to win. And, uh, we just got to show the world that we're not going to let one loss get to us. I saw you pointing to the crowd. I went and talked to your brother. I know you got a big fan support at home and now here at Ohio State. Just got to be excited overall for this opportunity. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's every time I have Joy coming out, running behind Coach Trestle, I mean, it's he's the greatest coach to me in the world. And uh, I think he is the best coach ever. So, I mean, I, I love Coach Trestle. I mean, it's fun every day, every day to wake up to be a Buckeye. It's fun. Congratulations. You set a record on a true freshman. Four touchdowns. Congratulations. They start conference play next week, guys. Well, the last time Ohio State had a true freshman at quarterback, his name was Arch Schleister. And, of course, he rewrote the Ohio State record books. And perhaps we're watching the official changing of the guard today in Columbus. As Terrell Pryor throws four touchdown passes. And Charles Davis, Carissa Thompson, our entire crew, Tom Brennan, saying thanks for joining us. Ohio State wins at 28 10. We now do go to our Chicago studio, and Dave Revson will see you next week.